Wells with MTV String Chaining Systems and BikeJams.com. Today, I want to talk to you about how to use wedges to improve your cornering and cockpit control. Now, wedges are something that I've really learned the importance of over the last almost seven years of doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. With Jiu Jitsu, learning how to control space is everything. And using wedges, your natural wedges that your body has and can create, to do that is the key to strong, efficient movement on the mat. And as I'm uh, looking at more how this applies to mountain biking, I'm realizing that we use wedges quite a bit with our riding as well. We just don't necessarily think about it that way and talk about it that way. But once you see what I'm talking about, you'll start to understand why you need to have your hands and your elbows in a certain position and actually getting them too wide is going to take away from your ability to corner and control your cockpit effectively. So, first of all, what is a wedge? A wedge is a triangular shaped tool that you use to either create or resist movement between two spaces, right? So, think about uh, using a wedge, like a, an iron triangular piece of metal, to uh, put a crack and you're hammering that wedge in and it splits the rock open, right? So, that's using a wedge driving in to create space between uh, two, two uh, objects. Uh, you can also use it to resist movement. So like a door stop is a good example for this. You put a door stop underneath a door, that's a wedge that resists movement. And so that's what we use a wedge for. Now, what are we talking about when we're using this on our bike? Let me show you. So the, the space that we're trying to control is the space between our shoulder and our handlebar. That's the space that we're looking at. The wedge that we're using is our hands, so is our arm here, our hand, our lower arm, and our upper arm. This creates the triangle that controls the space that we're looking at, right? So the space that we're trying to control, when you look at my handlebars, my handlebars move front and back. So that's the space I'm trying to control. I'm trying to either increase movement or, or increase space, or I'm trying to resist uh, um, movement and resist that decrease in space. And so where you see this on the bike is if I'm going to corner, I don't want to lean my bike over, I want to use counter pressure. I want to press into this handlebar, which gets the wheel to cock over this way, which gets the bike to lean this way. This is how you lean your bike, not like this, okay? So I have to have my wedge set up effectively in order to apply force into the handlebars. The other place that you'll see this is when the front wheels get ripped around, right? You hit a lot of hard landing, you hit a rut or a rock that you weren't quite expecting, and it starts to, you know, rip the handlebars around. So I need to be able to resist that movement effectively, or else I'm going to lose control and crash. And so again, I need to have my wedges set up to resist movement in this plane from front to back. Now here's the problem, though. When your elbows get too wide, and this is a common problem with people that have wide handlebars, if your handlebars are 30 inches or wider, I almost guarantee you that you have this problem, that your elbows are flared out. And so especially the deeper into your cockpit that you get, okay? And what that happens is, is now my wedge is here, not here, okay? I have to have my elbows behind my hands in order to resist movement and create movement in this plane. When my elbows get on top of my handlebars, I can't effectively create or resist movement in this plane. It's very weak for me to do. I can do it here, right? But it's, it's, it's much weaker and harder for me to resist movement and, and, and harder for me to create movement than it is here. This is a much stronger position for me. So when you have your handlebars too wide and your elbows flared out to the side, you take away good, effective use of your wedges to help corner and control your cockpit. So getting your handlebars narrower, again, I posted a video recently uh, called Your Handlebars Are Too Wide, a case study where we looked at my wife's new bike. Uh, the handlebars that came on her bike were 30 inches wide. You can clearly see how it affects her movement on the bike. We show you how we find the right length for her handlebars, cut them down, and then show you how it improves her movement on the bike. And this is one of the primary things is your ability to go through the full range of motion on your cockpit without having your shoulders and your elbows flare out. Because as soon as this happens, you lose upper back position and you lose good effective control and use of your wedges trying to get behind your hands and, and create and resist movement in this plane. So once you uh, start making better use of your wedges, 
you're going to find that your cornering and your stability uh, in general on your bike is going to go up. And again, if you have handlebars that are 30 inches or wider, odds are you need to chop them down. I'm almost six foot tall. My handlebars are 28 inches. And to be honest with you, I could probably stand to cut them down another half inch or inch. Uh, because at their widest, I noticed that I have trouble keeping my elbows and shoulders in a good position as I go through my cockpit's full range of motion. And that's not what we want. We have to maintain stability and good position of our elbows to make effective uses of our wedges so that we can move with strong, efficient movement on the bike. So anyways, next time you're out on the trail, think about this. Think about using your wedge to help control your cockpit and create and resist movement at your handlebars. And uh, yeah, you'll probably feel a, a significant difference in, in how you're feeling. And again, maybe getting your elbows down. Even if you don't chop your handlebars down, man, Get your elbows down, get them in a little bit. This, this scarecrow posture is terrible for your riding in so many different ways. So let's get away from that, right? Like we've gone too far from narrow handlebars with the elbows in to wide handlebars with the elbows out. We need that sweet spot. This is good effective use of our wedge. No good, no good, good, right? So find the hand position that's gonna let you use those wedges effectively. So anyways, once again, it's been James Wilson with MTV Strength Training Systems. You can check me out on the web at bikejams.com. Got a bunch of free stuff you can sign up for there. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this training tip, and I'll talk to you next time.